Hey everyone, it's Mark here. I thought I'd give you a bit of a market update in this video. Now, effectively, what's been happening in the market is that there's been some reasonably positive news, particularly focusing on the Asian markets. However, there's a fair degree of heterogeneity. So the first thing that I'll talk about is the impact of COVID and particular spikes in COVID numbers. So I've seen some spikes, for example, in Japan and Korea. So for example, in Japan, the number of new cases per day is up to around 4,800 per day, as opposed to the 1,100 or thereabouts that it was back in March. We're seeing a bit of an uptick in Korea as well. By contrast, there's not really an uptick in China on reported figures or in Vietnam or in Australia, at least not to anywhere near the same extent. So this also manifests in a degree of heterogeneity against the, in these stock markets rather. So let's have a look at what is happening to these stock markets. So if we have a look at the Shanghai index here, we can see the Shanghai index has been broadly positive, about 1.5% in most recent trade. Over the past week, it's also in positive territory. So the Shanghai index is doing quite well. We can similarly see this, for example, if we look at, maybe we go with the ASX 200. And if we look at the ASX 200, what you'll see again is again, positive territory in general terms, and over the past week, again, positive territory. However, if we have a look at the Nikkei index, what we'll see is something rather different. And in the Nikkei index, what we're seeing is positive territory today, but over the past five days, it has really been flatlining, i.e. not particularly good at all, comparatively speaking. And if we look over the past month, again, not brilliant compared to other markets. So what this is telling us is in the markets, where there has been a COVID spike, we're seeing some rather lukewarm market movements. Now, whether or not this gets resolved anytime soon is going to depend largely on what happens in terms of economic growth, recovery, and stimulus programs. So there's been some headwinds in terms of vaccines. Now, I'm not an immunologist, so I won't go into the details, but there have been some concerns over AstraZeneca. I would advise you to look at your government health authority and or your doctor to get more information about this. Similarly with the Sinovac vaccine, its efficacy is reported to be relatively low. So if we have a look at that, for example, so Sinovac vaccine efficacy, we can see that its efficacy is reasonably low here. So around the 50% area. That of course is going to weigh somewhat on markets as well in terms of how quickly they think that markets are going to recover and reopen. So we're seeing some negative news there as well in terms of recovery. So put differently, the market has been reasonably lukewarm due to some concerns in relation to vaccines and the like. So that's the first thing that's worth noting. The second update I want to give is in relation to travel bubbles. Travel bubbles are incredibly important in terms of reopening the economy. So focusing on Australia, for example, there's been talk of a travel bubble emerging between Australia and some Asian countries. The travel bubble between Australia and New Zealand is due to start. Now with Australia and New Zealand, that's a relatively straightforward travel bubble between two countries with very similar approaches to the vaccine. However, there is of course going to be some trepidation in that Australia and the states within Australia have had a reputation for shutting borders on a whim. So as long as that maintains, people are going to be deterred from traveling. Nevertheless, it is something that we do need to bear in mind. Now, if we're looking at the importance of this, say we're focusing on Australia just as one example. In Australia, tourism contributes around 3.1% of Australia's GDP, $61 billion. Now, 26% of this comes from international travel. This tells us that the resolution of this international travel issue is going to be important to ensuring the tourism sector is propped up, not just airlines, but other tourism operators. This would also manifest in other industries that have relied heavily on international visitors. Higher education, for example, is one of those. Now, Australia is a key example, but this same type of thing would apply to other countries as well. So the emergence of international travel is going to be very important. Qantas, for example, has hoped that we get international travel up and running by October or November this year. Whether or not that occurs is another question, but that's what they'd certainly been hoping for. So the travel bubble, of course, is positive news. The next piece of news I want to talk about is market volatility and what might happen to markets going forward, particularly with stimulus. So there's been a fair degree of volatility emerging. If we're looking at cryptocurrency markets, these are always volatile, but we've got some insanity occurring. For example, Doge or Dog or Dogecoin's stock price 
or price rather, increasing 400% from 8 cents per coin up to 40 cents or thereabouts, and then going just to 30 cents. So we have a look at Dogecoin's movements here. We can see what is happening here. So Dogecoin's price, and we'll be able to track this over time just relatively quickly. And what you'll see is that it has been super volatile. Bitcoin, of course, has had its largest fall in two months relatively recently as well. So Bitcoin has experienced significant volatility in addition to Dogecoin experiencing this volatility. So if we have a look at it over the past five days. Here's Dogecoin's volatility, significant increase from the around 10 cents or so up to 40 cents. So a high here was, we're looking at a high of somewhere around here, 55 cents. This is an Australian, so 40 something cents US. And then it goes back down to the 30 cents. So this is Doge to Australian, but similar type of volatility with the US, obviously just in US dollars instead. Similarly, if we go one month up, it has spiked. So a lot of volatility there, telling us there's a lot of retail investor activity, potentially knowingly investing at irrationally high prices, which of course is a little bit of a concern in terms of market stability. Now, if we look at stimulus related things in the United States, there are some issues we need to talk about there as well. When it comes down to stimulus, there's obviously some concerns. Joe Biden has wanted to promulgate a $2 trillion stimulus program focusing on infrastructure. This is in addition to the $1.9 trillion stimulus that had been passed before. This, of course, will run into headwinds of two types. One, the expenditure is super large, so we'll run into headwinds in terms of whether it gets approved. Probably about a third of it is super uncontroversial, just normal roads and things. A lot of it, though, is not really that uncontroversial. So there's controversy there about the stimulus size. In addition to this, we also have the concerns about taxes. So Joe Biden will want to increase taxes quite significantly. Joe Biden has wanted to increase corporate taxes up to 28% from 21%, in addition to increasing personal income taxes and also capital gains taxes, and in particular, removing capital gains tax discounts for people earning more than a million a year, increasing taxes on those earning more than 400,000 a year. The sticking point that I want to talk about, though, is corporate tax rates at the moment. Increasing those to 28% is going to be a Herculean task for Joe Biden. Of course, the Republicans don't want it, and Joe Manchin, who is a swing vote in the, in the Senate, who could easily block any of these initiatives, has signaled he doesn't agree with 28%. Has signaled he might agree with 25%, which to my mind is not really, uh, is, a, so is a number that's kind of arbitrary, but that's another issue. So Joe Manchin is going to get in the way of these tax increases. Without the tax increases, paying for this infrastructure program is going to be very difficult. So Joe Biden pursuing the stimulus here is going to be quite challenging. So to some extent, I feel that optimism associated with any spending, to the extent there is optimism, is perhaps a little bit too optimistic, given that I see it as very unlikely that this full infrastructure spending plan would get through. And I see it as very unlikely that tax increases would get through, which is both good and bad, depending on your perspective, i.e. it's good in that with the tax increases, if they were to occur, that's clearly negative economic growth and for corporations. So preventing those is a clear positive. But of course, it means one would not be able to afford the infrastructure spending. So that, of course, needs to be borne in mind. So in any case, that's a bit of a broad market update. I hope it's given you a bit of an idea about what's happening, a bit of an idea about some of the current market events, and I hope it's been somewhat informative to you. And thanks a lot for tuning in. And I do very much hope to see you for future updates and future videos as well. Bye.